and realize that this world pagan religion, even predating the gods of Olympus, is now back. And Francis is basically the single greatest purveyor of that false religion. Well, Father, perhaps that uh, can lead nicely into the next topic we wanted to discuss in the second half of the program and the, the news a lot we hear about uh, climate change and, and this, this question of the environment seems to, to dominate almost a lot of other things. Hmm. Well, actually, there were, there were actually uh, newscasters and those who uh, actually news editors who made it very clear that once the COVID scare passes, the next one will be climate change. Now, we, we've got to go on to that hmm. and we've got to induce fear so as to induce control over people because of climate change. So they made it very clear that was where they intended to go with this. Mm -hmm. It's all orchestrated. But Father, what, uh, what, should, what should Catholics, what should traditional Catholics <laughs> think of, of the, the environmental movement as a whole? Um, it's relatively new, it seems, or at least in its current form. But, um, you know, obviously this on the surface seems like a good thing to take care of the, the creation that, that God uh, has given to us, not to, uh, not to spoil it, not to ruin it. Um, on the surface, this seems like a good thing. What should Catholics think of the environmental movement? Well, the environmental mo movement as it is, as it is today. Yeah, I think it should be looked upon as a, as a scam and uh, simply has been co-opted by the, uh, the leftist as their cause, as a cause to gain control over the world's population. The argument of reducing the population, all the matters of birth control, whether it be the pill or homosexuality, providing that among peoples, uh, the, the transgender movement and all the rest, they're all about attacks on, on human life, okay? And I think the current environmental movement is another form of that attack on human life. The environmental movement today is actually more than just a movement, it's a religion. They're turning it into a religion. In fact, the former head of the Vatican Bank, at the time that uh, Archbishop Vigano was overseeing the Vatican finances. His name was Ettore Gotti Tedeschi. He said that this is the future one world religion. This is why, you know, after COVID, they have to go, they have to keep beating the drums for this environmental Gnosticism because that has to become the one world religion. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, this, you say this is, this is anti-human life. It, um, it certainly isn't sold to us that way because we constantly hear, um, you know, that we must take care of the environment because of human life, we, we want our, uh, we want human life to, to flourish, to have our best uh, lives here. And we have things going on like climate change, which is going to destroy uh, the climate to make the planet uninhabitable un for yeah, us. But it's not for human beings. Human beings are looked upon as the enemy of the climate. Human beings are looked upon as the enemy of the earth. We are the polluters. We are the problem. We are the ones, they say, who are causing climate change. And it's because there are too many of us and many of us just have to go away. I mean, they, they, they don't talk about the Georgia Guidestones. I suppose most of these environmentalists don't even know about them. But the, the fact is they're very significant. In Georgia, the Guidestones, uh, the very first provision made there is that the population of the, of the world must not exceed, what do they say, 500 million people, period. That's like a commandment of the new age. That means that a lot of billions of people have to die. We have to go away. They have to make us go away. How are they going to do it? Famine and, uh, and disease, pestilence of their own making. Uh, these are all contrived. These are programs they're undertaking because they can afford it. Um, they have the resources now and they control over the resources of the world that they can actually kill off millions of people. Um, and the, you know, there are certain uh, uh, billionaires today who have made no secret about that this is actually desirable. Bill Gates among them. Um, so in any, in any case, um, no, if, if the, the idea is that we are the enemies of the earth and w the earth is not here created by God to serve us, human life. We are here to serve the earth. Uh, we are here to serve the the, the goddess, the earth, we are to serve this world. It's the total inversion and perversion of what we read in sacred scripture, that God created this world to be our home and our, at our service, right? And we are meant to be good stewards of the world. Now, unfortunately, there's a certain appeal that that has to, you know, people, Catholics who have the idea that, yes, we're responsible, so we have to take good care of the earth. We do. 
you have a responsibility to God, right? And uh, polluting the world and, and, and so on can, be, can actually be sinful. That's true. Damaging what God has created it can certainly be sinful. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, so many of these environmentalists are, are died in the will abortionists too, right? It's okay to destroy human life, right? Actually, it's just doing the world a service by destroying human life because human life is the enemy. So, no, they're not concerned about human welfare and the, good, the, the happiness of human life, except perhaps their own. Um, but they do look upon our species as kind of a, uh, a gigantic uh, weed or parasite that has to be severely cut back. Is there any truth at all to that, though, Father? Because we, you know, we see um, in, in very large cities, we know there's terrible air pollution sometimes, and, uh, and you know, if you kind of multiply that out, and we have more and more people in the world, plus more and more bigger cities, we would see more and more pollution, and the air quality as a whole would go down. The world would become, the environment would become a, a worse, a uh, and it become a worse right. condition. Well, again, Tom, I say, you know. I say the movement has been taken over. That doesn't mean the the idea of environment the environmental idea is a bad idea. The idea of sustainability is not a bad idea. It's a very human, commonsensical sort of thing to use the resources of the world for what is literally, truly, in the traditional Catholic way of understanding, the common good of mankind. Um, but the problem is that um, the enemy, like the, the leftists can see this cause as an opportunity for them to gain more and more control. And the problem, as I, as I say it, is, is not just, um, is not against the idea of taking good care of the environment. We have an obligation before God to do that. We, I admit that. I acknowledge that. All Catholics acknowledge that. We have an obligation before God to take care of His creation. Um, but we also, I think, have to face the reality that the devil can appear as an angel of light and like the communists can, can come in and they can see an opportunity and decide to use this to their advantage to gain control over whole populations, even over the whole world. And um, ultimately what is happening now, and I think um, Ettore Gorodeski uh, is right, that they're trying to make it a religion and the foundation of a one world religion with earth worship. You know, Tom, I, I don't know that everybody makes this connection. There are people who recognize the environmental movement as now having fallen under the control of quite godless and inhuman people who want to use it to gain dictatorial, tyrannical control over the human race. Um, and there, many of the same people would say that they disagree with uh, the introduction of pagan idols, the Pachamamas, into the Vatican. Um, the worship of Pachamama in the Vatican Gardens, right? In, uh, during the, the October 2019 Amazon Synod the carrying of the Pashamama into St. Peter's Basilica, the invoking of certain prayers led by Francis, you know, with this ceremonies of Pachamama, and then carrying it, the, the Pachamama idol triumphantly to stand before the Synod, right in front of where Francis was sitting, right? That Pachamama is right there in front of where he is, and all those who are in attendance are, are actually looking at him, toward him, supposedly, but Pachamama is right there in front of him. Uh, all of these things are a statement. There are those who would contend, condemn the introduction of, of pagan idols into the Vatican, or anywhere else for that matter. <clears throat> there are those who would say the environmental movement has been, has been uh, compromised by leftists. But I don't know that people are making the connection <clears throat> between the two of them. And there's an intimate connection between those two phenomena. Francis bringing the Pachamama in, the earth goddess, for worship, and the environmental movement are intimately tied together. Francis Laudato C. talking about environmentalism and caring for the earth, and then the introduction of an actual earth goddess idol 
for worship. These two things actually go together. I mean, they're part of the same program. Francis' is Laudato Si, followed by the Pachamama idol. It's all part of the earth goddess world-worshipping mentality that Francis is bringing in with him to basically foster not only uh, well one world government but a one world religion and Francis is essentially the their point man in getting this done <clears throat> and he's going to be their point man in in trying to move the catholics away from traditional catholic belief to the acceptance of the worship of the earth and the one world religion of Gaianism, you know, Gaia, the earth goddess. And uh, Pachamama was part of that, is part of that program to justify this worship in the name of environmentalism. You know, you read those, those documents that were published for the Amazon Synod, right? There was, first of all, a draft document that was that was produced for the Amazon Synod to consider. There was another draft of it that came out, right? There was a Corita Amazonia, I think, a document of Francis that came out afterwards. And all of these, all of these documents are just absolutely dripping with personification of nature. Uh, like the, the Amazon is the great mother womb and the rivers throwing through it, giving life. And I mean, all of this is, is animism. It's all that pagan, native pagan religion. The whole, the whole thing is couched in those terms. It's impossible to read these documents without getting almost, as a Catholic, sick to your stomach to realize he's actually promoting the religion of, Amazon, of animism, the old pagan religion that saw you know, spirits in the jaguars and spirits in the turtles and spirits in the snakes, Pachawama. <clears throat> and uh, you know, all of nature is, is, is animated by these Idle, idle, idle spirit forces, of which you and I are a part. We are just, and I are among them as one of them. And um, you know, people unfortunately they they read these things and they say this is very alien to the Catholic faith. This is very strange. It gives me the creeps. But they they really need to read them in context and realize that this world pagan religion, even predating the gods of Olympus, is now back. And Francis is basically the, the single greatest purveyor of that false religion mm. through the Vatican. And the Pachamama business is actually part of that overall program, mm. uh, promoting, well, he's got environmentalism, but again, he wants to give it a religious foundation. And the Pachamama is actually the religious part of that foundation of environmentalism that comes through the Vatican. Because, as I say, that's his mission. His mission to complete the, the work of Vatican II, to actually uh, lay the groundwork and start the impetus toward the one world religion, the worship of the world, and to see ourselves simply as part of the world and nothing more. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, it certainly makes sense why politicians, leftist politicians, would promote um, would promote this cause because, as you say, it helps them uh, gain power and dictatorial control over over people. But what what does Francis and the Novus Ordo Church stand to gain by by pushing this? You know, this seems to be one of the driving themes of Francis' papacy. He created the new uh, the new work of mercy, the care of creation or care of the environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, he wrote, wrote the encyclicals about it and seems to talk incessantly about uh, the, the environment. What does Francis and the Novus Ordo Church stand to gain from this? Are they just that demented, that perverse, that they just want to totally destroy any kind of semblance? The of, objective uh, is the destruction of traditional Catholicism. But, you see, they, they have a certain animosity toward God as we know him in our traditional Catholic faith. They don't like that God. <clears throat> they want a different God, and this will be a God of basically their own creation. <clears throat> um, it's, uh, Archbishop Vigano recently came out with a statement saying that the, the Freemasons are using the Vatican to promote their one world order now. Okay? 
And so, I mean, this, this, plan, this plan has been at work for a long, long time. It's called the Mystery of Iniquity. And uh, the Masons have talked about this uh, very openly, uh, seizing the papacy for the sake of promoting their own Masonic idea of what religion is. It's a, basically uh, a te technologically savvy uh, paganism. Okay? It's, it's a, a kind of a, a, a uh, reincarnation, if you will, or a re replay of the ancient paganism now with a technological uh, ability, you know, power behind, behind it. And they feel that they can do it now because the technology enables them to surveil everybody, read their minds, they think, and control them, absolutely, the entire population of the world. I mean, Harari has actually come out and said that. Now we have the power to do what the tyrants in the past only dreamed of doing. Okay, now we can do that. Yeah. And his point is, now we have to do that. Now we should do this. And uh, but not and go away with the idea of a God in heaven. We are the new gods. We are going to create humanity uh, according to our own, our own scheme, which, is me, which they say is going to be a digi digitized humanity. Okay? Techno, a human techno, basically, uh, essentially a, a, just a, gl a glorified robot, you know that they programmed uh, as their servants, <laughs> so as their slaves. So um, it's not a matter of what they stand to gain. They're, mo they're motivated by a real malice toward, well, as Francis says, look what he said. In last week's program, we talked about that, the restorationists. I mean, he has a real malice toward these people. He says, the restorationists who still cling to the Council of Trent, they are the enemy, they are the obstacle, they are the problem. We have to overcome them. We have to stop them, right, and overcome them so that everybody adopts Vatican II and stops looking to the Council of Trent. As I mentioned last week, he was actually saying, in so many words, that Cardinal Ottaviani was right. In 1969, Cardinal Ottaviani with Cardinal Abacci and uh, 40 Roman theologians issued a letter, an open letter to Paul VI, and a critical study of the new Mass. This is before it came out, right? A critical study of the new order of Mass that, the, that was about to be issued by the Vatican. This is what people see now essentially going on in their modern churches right now, under the name of Catholicism. And uh, Cardinal Ottaviani made the statement multiple times that the new Mass has no intention of standing for the doctrines of the faith as taught by the Council of Trent, to which the Catholic conscience is bound forever, he said. Catholics are bound forever to believe that the doctrines of the Church as taught at the Council of Trent. And uh, Cardinal Ottaviani said that the new Mass had nothing to do, had no intention of standing for that, of representing that, that faith. He said, rather, the, council, the new Mass actually was calculated to please the most liberal of Protestants and represented a different faith, essentially. Uh, actually was much in accord with, um, well, they didn't use the word modernism, but he described what the new mass represented, and that was it. Okay? It wasn't the Catholic faith. Uh, he said in there that so, so much was this is the case the Council of Trent rejecting, the, I'm sorry, the New Mass rejecting the, the teachings of the Council of Trent <clears throat> that if the Vatican was going to impose the New Mass, it would create a crisis of conscience among the Catholic people, especially the most devoted, the most devoted and uh, faithful Catholic people would be put in a terrible position of being forced to make a terrible choice. That's what he said in 1969. Go back and read the Ottaviani intervention. It's all right there. And here, here's Francis now. He comes out and to these journalists and the publishers, editors, and so on of these Jesuit periodicals, Jesuit magazines, he's saying that the Restorationists, those, uh, those who want the traditional Mass and traditional sacraments and the traditional doctrines of the Church, <clears throat> are the big obstacle. They are the big problem facing the Church right now. And uh, because they look back to the Council of Trent rather than the Vatican II. Now, what could be more blatant an admission 
the Vatican II and Council of Trent are, are mutually exclusive of each other. <clears throat> that looking to the one excludes the other. And so that's the choice that Cardinal Ottaviani was talking about in 1969. Uh, so I think Francis, in his own friend's way, Francis, Franciscan way, whatever, I wouldn't say Franciscan, uh, Franciscan maybe would be a better term, uh, because of his whole swishing around and the whole idea that he keeps appointing all of these princesses of the church as cardinals, um, that he actually has come out and told everyone, yes, you have to make a choice between the Council of the Trent and the Vatican and our Vatican too. But Francis was elected, by, was chosen by the modernists for that very purpose. He was chosen for the very purpose of realizing the promise of Vatican II and basically finishing the work of Vatican II, the demolition of the traditional faith and the replacement in the hearts and the minds of human beings with the one world religion of what uh, exactly what uh, Mr. Tedeschi, Signor Tedeschi said. Signore Tedeschi talked about environmental Gnosticism, maybe Gnostic environmentalism, whatever, whatever they say, but that's the new religion. And uh, the, the, right now, the prime emblem of that is Francis's Pachamama. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, practically speaking, how should a traditional Catholic um, act in, in regards to this manner? Because obviously we don't want the animism or, or paganism that, uh, or the one world religion that we're talking about here. But we do, as we establish, we do in fact care about the environment. We, we do care about uh, the creation that God has blessed us with. So um, practically speaking, what does that mean? How do we act? Should we be doing things like recycling and buying electric vehicles? Um, we have we to do? be sensible enough to, to not be deceived by the false. I mean, if you want to, if you talk about environmentalism, Tom, I mean, you have the ISM on the end, which is like a belief system. Catholicism, Bolshevism, right? Communism, socialism, they all kind of are belief systems, okay? As soon as you're just talking about environmentalism, you raise it to the level of kind of a belief system. And again, you kind of <clears throat> present it as some kind of a ersatz religion. <clears throat> so we have to absolutely reject environmentalism. Okay? We have to always relate all of these questions to our Catholic faith. And we realize we do have an obligation to um, take good care of God's creation here. And that means not to poison it, not to pollute it, not to abuse it. I mean, when we were kids in school, we had, you know, the, the, the kid next to us who liked to pull the wings off flies or the, the, the legs off spiders. And, you know, we always, maybe some of us who weren't doing that, thought that was a little peculiar and a little creepy. <clears throat> and realize you just don't do that to a living thing and enjoy it, you know. Uh, there's something wrong with that. Well, there's something wrong with just a wholesale polluting of the nation, polluting of the world. There's something wrong with uh, big pharma right now. There's something very wrong with Food Incorporated right now. And these major corporations are taking over the necessities, you know, production of necessity of life, the worst form of socialism, <clears throat> where the great corporations are controlled by a handful of people who also control the politicians. There you bring together the economic uh, production uh, with the, the, the power of government. And this is the, the formula for the worst form of tyranny. And that's what we've got. This is what we're facing right now. So, um, I mean, look, the very people who are behind this environmentalism are the ones who are pushing all this evil stuff right now. Uh, so you can see that environmentalism for them is not actually a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter of policy and it's a matter of actually imposing tyranny and gaining control over the whole world. We have to reject their environmentalism as a religion. Uh, we have to, as Catholics, be responsible for ourselves and see, well, you know, we are required to take care of things. Remember the old days when uh, when parents would say, or the sisters in the classrooms would say, you know, you should not waste food. You should think about those in the world who don't have any. And so you should be careful not to waste food. And not only that, but they had us contributing our quarters during Lent for the, you know, for the missions. 
uh, so that they could obtain food. No one has been greater in, in dealing with the acts of charity uh, than the Catholic man, woman, and child in the course of history. <clears throat> and, but the, the idea of taking care of things has, is a very Catholic idea. Going back hundreds of years, centuries and centuries, Catholic children were taught, you know, <clears throat> to economize, always economize. You know, turn the lights off when you leave the room. Don't let the water run. You know, just run indiscriminately. And we were taught this just because it's not a matter of religious uh, environmentalism of saving the earth. We are taught that because it's irresponsible. It's simply irresponsible. It's imprudent. It sets a bad example. It's wasteful. It's wasteful. And we were always taught that being wasteful is wrong, is morally wrong. We were taught that being wasteful is uh, against charity, and it's something that we would even find necessary to confess if we were really wasteful of, of something good that would be a benefit to somebody else, and I'm just wasting it. We always were taught we had responsibility for that. <clears throat> and how did they get us off of that training from our own parents to environmentalism now, where you know we, we are at the service of, of serving the earth, and preventing the earth from being wounded. Because the earth is now being wounded by us and the earth is reacting against us and punishing us, right? By the things that happen to us. The earth is convulsing now because we're wounding and hurting her. I mean, what kind of mythology is that? That they put in the place of a simple lesson that children learned to, you know, be frugal, not to waste, be considerate, of others to be generous and help and not to not to poison the world around them. Um, that's not environmentalism, that's just Catholicism. Uh, so we have to think like Catholics in all of this. Um, I, I do think we have an obligation not to poison the world. Uh, tell it to the major corporations who've made billions of dollars poisoning the world and selling us products that poison us, and then selling us products, product, products to try to offset the poison, and then selling us products to offset the poison that is caused by the, by the other products. On and on and on it goes. You know, I'm not a, an expert on television, but, you know, I, I go through the airports a bit, and I do hear things, and I see a, a pattern that it, it, it just seems as though half of the commercials are for uh, medications, pharmaceuticals, this new latest medication that will treat you for high blood pressure, low blood pressure, that will treat you for stroke symptoms, that will treat you for, uh, you know, heart arrhythmia, whatever they've got going out there. They'll treat you for diabetes, they'll treat you for, uh, you name it, right? Uh, half of the commercials about the latest, greatest new pill or medication or treatment that they've got out there. And the other half of the commercials seem to be for lawyers suing for the damage done by the latest, greatest medication procedure of two years before. It's like a two years lap time. If you were injured by this medication or you were injured by this procedure, um, you know, this, this, this uh, mesh, the, this mesh for, you know, this particular affliction and so on. I won't go into the details there. <laughs> the point is, then call us right now and we'll tell you what your case is worth. I mean, is it my imagination? I, I, I don't know that you're a, a television a holic or whatever. <laughs> Did, do you see what I mean? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the latest, greatest medication that can cure you of what ails you. And then they tell you all the things it can cause. You know, take this medication for depression. Caution might cause depression. Yeah. Right? Or suicidal thoughts, <laughs> uh, along with a myriad of other problems. And then two years later, you're going to have the, the lawyers all over the... Uh, this, the airwaves offering to sue the companies that produce these things because of all the damage these things did to people. And this is the kind of vicious circle they've got us in right now. Um, this is what, and when, you know, when we return to the question of environmentalism, that's all very much part of this. It's all part of this big cycle of um, in fact, I'd say that is the big picture of, of all of this. And all of these things are elements of that. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would 
ones say that environmentalism is the big picture and all these other things are all like um, subsets of that or with, contained within it because I think the environmentalism is actually going to become the one world religion. That we are uh, products of Mother Earth, children and uh, sons and daughters. Well, you can't even say that anymore. Anyway. We, are, we are offspring or whatever of Mother Earth and uh, all glory, praise and, praise and honor go to Mother Earth. And this is where we're going. <clears throat> you know, um, and I, 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 again, I, I have to see uh, Francis's Pachamama as part of the uh, picture, playing into that whole picture. Um, you're familiar with the novel by Monsignor Robert U. Benson, The Lord of the World, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, there's a high point in the novel where the Antichrist, uh, Julian Felsenberg, has his, his acolyte, remember that? His master of ceremonies for the worship of the mother goddess. And you know his name, Mr. Francis. He's an apostate priest, right? Mr. Francis is orchestrating the worship of the mother goddess. And it, the, the scene from the novel portrays this gigantic statue of this female figure, completely unclothed, but reigning as some kind of a Greek goddess. And the little figure of Julian Felsenberg uh, calling out to this as its mother, you know, its goddess and uh, its creator, his creator, and he's there at the great service, the Antichrist of this, of this figure. You know, it would really be worthwhile for people who have any real interest in all this to find that book, or at least to go to that part of the book. You can find it online. Actually, it's 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 online and. Uh, to actually seek out that, that scene, I think they'd find it very, well, I think they'd find it very interesting, especially in light of what we know now and where we expect they're going with this. So, um, <clears throat> environmentalism as such is a false religion. It is an anti-Christ and anti-Christian religion, and it is... I think uh, Mr. Signore Tedesca is absolutely right when he makes this very sage prediction that it is destined to be, it is uh, sure, sort of earmarked to become the world religion. Um, and, and Francis is very much a prophet of that religion. Well, Father, thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate your time. Appreciate all of your insight tonight. And the solution to all of this is oh, what it has always been, Tom: traditional Catholicism, practicing the traditional Catholic faith. It's the one thing that Francis wants to stop. He wants to put an end to it. It's what the Masons want to stop. It's what all all the enemies of of God want stopped. It's what the powers of hell want stopped. They want the traditional Catholic faith. It's it's mass and sacrament. With their justifying and sanctifying powers, they want that stopped. Okay. And so what we need to do is, well, recognizing not that they want it stopped, but they want it stopped because they hate God who wants it, who gave it to us, who entrusted that to us, the faith, hope, and charity of Christ, that we have to um, be faithful to God in all of this. We have to reject the false religion of environmentalism, We've got to be, and by the way, look, I even consider abortion to be a part of that whole world religion yeah. uh, of anti-human life, as though human life is the scum of the earth and the, the polluter of the world. And uh, PETA, I think, e even, even PETA kind of even hints at that. You know, a rat is a pig, is a boy. It's, it's, it's all the same. There's no real distinction between the two of them. Uh, it all is of a piece there. And the, the one thing that stands against all of that is our traditional Catholic faith. So you asked, well, what should we do? Practice your traditional Catholic faith. Do what your traditional Catholic faith tells you to do. And in terms of common sense with regard to the things of this world, uh, don't be wasteful. Uh, conserve these things out of respect for God because it is, this is God's creation. Uh, not out of some worshipful 
mania for some mythical mother goddess of the world, mm. a Pachamama. Don't worship that. Worship the true God and do what you do out of love and respect for the true God. It's the one true religion <clears throat> versus the one world religion. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Well, Father, thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate your time and everything that you do. God bless you. Certainly, Don. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks to all of our viewers as well for watching this episode of What Catholics Believe. Until next time, we ask that you all remember the words of Our Lady at Fatima to consecrate yourselves and your families to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and to pray and do penance. Thank you and God bless you.